is an Avocado Media presentation. Welcome to Breaking You Down. My name is Victor Morigisa. I am the voice actor for season one and also the writer for season one. And Breaking You Down is a show dedicated to the events and occurrences in you, a podcast that is hosted on the Avocado Media Network. For today's episode, I have with me a genius of sorts. <laughs> Yeah. Of socks. I, of socks. <laughs> <laughs> and socks. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Already breaking you down. Uh, so yeah, we've got a genius here in the literature sense and the literal sense. Is, is, it, is, is, that, the, is that the correct? I'll allow it. I am the... Oh. Yes. <laughs> We're starting off like that. So if you could just introduce yourself before I do any more butchering of who you are. I'm going to butcher my name too. Chilu. I'm going to literally butcher it. It's longer than that, but mm. I like Chilu. Okay. Chilu SM if you want to be formal. Okay. Mm-hmm. I like to go by Chilu. Okay. It's simple. It's sweet. It's everything I am except for meat. All right. That's great. Uh, that's that's him. That's why <laughs> I just wanted him to say it. You know what I mean? My best introduction ever, actually. That's, yeah. that's the, that's, I don't think there's actually a better introduction in the world to anything. I don't think there's a word to introduce one right. to better. So, you, you just listened to episode one of you. It's called Animals, and it is based on an evening out yeah. on the town. Yeah. Do you have any experience? With One might even say a night out. A night out. Yeah. 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 Do you have what? 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 What was your first ex- like impression of it? A night out or impression of the of uh, the episode, episode animals. Um, it was eerie. Um, but if we're going purely on first impressions, what the, what thoughts do what like the, what mm-hmm. are the since you what are the thoughts that just came up now that yeah, you because it's titled animals, animals, right? Um, it adds to the, it, it it adds to the story a little, you know. Okay. Um, we have uh, our character. We have us. Do I say us? I <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah. uh, we. Have... What are you like? Like in, in and this is this is why I would like to uh-huh. to have these little interviews with people. It's because you is it plays out differently in everybody's exactly, mind. Exactly. Exactly. So I'm curious about yes. what it looks like so in I'm your mind. So I'm going to give that reflection. So that's exactly um, that's exactly the feeling I got from it. So I'm like, okay, he's in. Um, sorry to sound technical if I am, but uh, he's employing a technique you're uh, using the second person voice, mm. which is an interesting technique because that's exactly what it does. It projects a feeling mm. onto the, uh, the, the the reader, or in this case, the listener. Mm. Um, it's a, a point of view, right? So immediately you're right. I have a point of view. So um, when I imagine the lady walking up to me, so uh, let's begin with a night out. Okay. Even the way I picture a night out, Mm -hmm. you know, um, I was hearing the words the narrator was using. So they were helping me set the scene Mm -hmm. and, you know, I was constructing with every single word that was used. I was building up the scene, Mm -hmm. which was interesting. And it did, of course, lead me to think, I wonder how someone else's night scene would look like. Mm. So immediately I was thinking back on myself. I was I was ewing, as it were. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what 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 scene was that? What was the scene like? Initially, for me, it was um, uh, every time I think of a night out, no matter how brightly lit the place I'm at, it still feels dark. Mm. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> okay. Um, yes. So it was a it was a it was a club scene uh, what I, that I initially pictured, but then there's something you said when sorry there's something the narrator or you, there's something the narrator said. The words were there are twenty people too many in mm-hmm. here. For me, for some reason, that brought down the numbers. Although again, it did make me reflect that, like, what, because I was like, okay, that sounds like a house party, not a mm-hmm. club. But then I did ask, have you ever been in a club with what three hundred people in? Mm-hmm. You know, no, you have not. I know the clubs you go to. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, what clubs are those? <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen's clubs. <laughs> you guys drink tea. Um, mm-hmm. Self-effacement notwithstanding. <laughs> so I so now it became a house party scene, which I think made more sense because he did. Uh, we did now go onto a roof to catch a breather, mm-hmm. which is funny. Do you think you know anybody who? Let me not say a heavy party, but you know somebody who who dabbles in in, in the party lifestyle. I'm pretty sure everybody has a go out onto the rooftop for a breath of fresh moment. Mm, yeah, you know what I mean? True, yeah. yeah. There's always a point in the evening mm. when it, 
gets too sweaty in the mm. part. <laughs> that, to, yeah, just to break it down, yeah. like for real, for like yeah. for any reason other than it being like for mm. philosophical reason, sure. it's just like the yes, physical yes, conditions exactly, become exactly. overbearing for your and nostrils. And it lends itself to a mental state. Yes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. The music yeah. is too yeah. loud. The, yeah. it, it puts the picture really badly together. The yes. elements work against you. So you take a walk outside. It's almost like a sensory overload. Yes, you know that's I mean? exactly what. Because it is. that was the intention to go out anyway. Mm-hmm. You are going to if not delight you know in a sense overload them, mm-hmm. you know what i mean and so you get to that point but it's also a critical mass as well yeah <laughs> you know what i yeah. mean <laughs> so Absolutely. you have to have the moment of all right i'm going outside to de. some people say decompress yeah you know what i mean which so you know so uh we have our decompression moment um uh the narrator breathe oh you know you breathe in and out so uh, that even that motion in itself, that action, um, lots of thoughts come to mind uh, mm. upon hearing it. Um, it's if you know if, if 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 we're following through with the device of this particular, can I call it a story? Mm. Yeah, of this particular narration or narrative, the art of breathing in and out and hearing it happen on your behalf, mm. you know, is a delightful. You know mm. what I mean? Yes, mm. <laughs> you know what I mean. It's also uh, don't don't you think it's also a bit freaky? It is. It right. is. It's, it's disconcerting. Like you, yeah, you didn't yes. breathe. You you know uh-huh. you want it. The question uh-huh. that it raises in uh-huh. your mind is like, what if it makes me do something I'm not comfortable mm. with doing? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, this so happened it, to be the thing that I well, like. That is what is, and and that's exactly where all of this is ramping up to. So definitely, the narrative does a great job of okay. So prepare yourselves. Mm. We're going on yeah, a sensory yeah, journey. Yeah, you're gonna be moving <laughs> exactly, and it works well with all the elements. The the music is cool. So when I say eerie, I I I I, I love. I'm a huge fan of good background music. You know mm. I'm saying in setting scenes um I've, I've been for a long time i've been saying people put out audio books or people even just do narrations should do it with music in the background even when you're reading your own book it adds a certain element so so we have this narrative where there's this eerie music in setting the scene you've got your tones and the thing is um we have tones in our minds as well generally mm-hmm. speaking we all have a background music and it usually sets our scenes as well yeah all yeah, right so for me in particular <laughs> for you and I, mm. for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, in this narrative, there's a moment of silence before the the embodiment of our desires uh, come appears. Right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, for me, um, I'm so used to getting my. Re- this is this is beyond first impression. I'm just telling yeah. you, my- <laughs> I just, Yeah, I just want to know what, what right. you think of it. So That's this, what these conversations are about. So for me, about, this yeah. was the focal uh, moment. This was the the, the moment of um, highest uh, uh, tension for me in in, in in the narrative is when the lady appears. Mm. You know, she's nameless, um, somewhat faceless. She's described in um, uh, superlatives, you mm-hmm. know, beautiful. Um, basically, the object of our desire for me. I was like, okay, so this has come. You, to did you uh, uh-huh. uh, side side question? Did yeah. you see an actual person? Yes, but <laughs> like I, I mean, by that I mean an actual real person. Oh, a real person? No, okay. no, no, cool. no. It's been long since I've been excited <laughs> about a real person. <laughs> I'm hard to please that way. So, wow. yes. <laughs> yeah. And so, but I also did interpret the uh, this, the the image of the person I did see. Okay. Yeah, and I found that if I can do a little bit of uh, self um, introspection, I found it interesting the way. I picture because I, I I definitely pictured what I picture as desire, mm. all right, which is a concept which is not necess- not even necessarily it's not a um, bad malicious uh, evil immoral thing, mm. and yet the concept of desire generally has connotations of a desire is a thing that you want that you know you shouldn't. Mm. You know what I mean? So I'm looking at this person that I pictured. So I'm like. Ah, but why must you picture her like this? Yeah. She's literally dripping with this, you know, tainted view of desire that you have. Mm. You know, what is your relationship with desire and why do you find it so, you know, yeah. you know. And of course, I can blame the music that you were playing. <laughs> <laughs> you can. <laughs> you know, exactly. Yeah, you can I blame can, mainstream media. I, you I can could blame do fashion. That too, but you can then, blame anything. But at the end of the day, it's me. Do you know mm. what I'm saying? At the end of the day, this is, I'm looking in at myself. So it's like, so why do you picture desire this way? You know, and I feel that many people will get that impression as well. I mean, if I can go as far, maybe that was the point of the whole narration. Who knows? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Maybe, yeah, <laughs> maybe, exactly. Yeah. Who knows? So, this lady's there. And so for me, I'm looking, so I'm like, okay, so what is it about you and um, your desires and the things that you want, which um, seem to be 
um, if not always out of reach, at least always going into the dark places that you want to escape from. Mm-hmm. For instance, this lady comes from what we were told is from the dark. From, from the shadow. From the shadow, yeah. exactly. So she comes from out of reach. She comes from, from somewhere else. Looks at you, you have this moment of, okay, I'm looking and I can't take my eyes away from this thing, but mm-hmm. neither can I address it and, you know, fully experience it because it feels, you know, too hot to the touch, even, mm-hmm. you know, mentally. Do you know what I mean? And so, you know, she, uh, she asks us a question, right? Um, no, she just says pity. No, yes, it's like, do you ask a question? She responds pity to some. Oh, she just looks and says pity. She just pity. looks at you and says pity. What did, the, 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 what did our character feel? He felt something at yeah. first. What did you feel? Um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm want, I want to react to You're his words. You're transfixed for a moment. You're yes. watching, right? There, I feel like there was... A, anyway, I, could, I feel like there was something that she responded pity to. Because, was it about not... You know what? Maybe this is me projecting what I thought. As if, <laughs> it felt as if... He was supposed to go somewhere, you know, or actually that, goodness me, when she said the words pity, all right, for me, what came across was, you know, you could actually have all of this, but for some reason, you don't, you don't go for it. And so now I'm going to walk back in. To the to shadow. The, to, exactly. Not to the shadow. She actually walked into the, into the club. Yeah. Yes, or the club, as it were. Yes. She walked into that place where we've just come from for a breather. Mm. You know? Interestingly, where she mm. also wasn't in the beginning. No, right? that, that is not right? where so she came from. So there was two people on the rooftop. That is not point. where she came from. <laughs> you know? Well, was she even on the rooftop? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Don't forget, our character was going through a moment of decompression after he had reached what he thought was his critical mass of pleasure. Critical mm. mass, rather, of pleasure. Mm. And so now this embodiment of the desire appears and then walks back to the place and says, you know, uh, pity because you could, you could, could be all you, yeah. exactly. You want things, you know, you could have things, but for some reason you go back to the thing that you were escaping from. Mm. So maybe I'm just going to walk there and I know you're going to follow me in. Mm. You know what I mean? Because that's just who you are. Mm. And of course, you know, there is a moment of defiance, I feel, in, the, uh, in, in our character where he's like, no, but I, I, I'm not like that. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. He thinks to himself, you could have said anything, but he said all you did was blink. Mm. You know, so he does feel like, you know what, dude, you know, as, as we say these days, do better. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> do better. <laughs> you know what I mean? But at the same time, almost with, um, you know, with, with a very dark uh, 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 um, a sense of overshadowing, maybe almost with a sly grin, mm. he says, but you know, um, we get up to terrible things and s- 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 so do some of these women, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> um, it's a very um, dark and dangerous place out here. They told you you shouldn't get into camps by yourself. Mm. You know what I mean? Which again, um, could have so much subtext to it. Yeah. You know? And that's what we're doing. We're dealing with them. Um, the first episode gives you an impression of, you know, all of these themes, darkness, uh, night too uh, uh, loud, uh, shadow, uh, desire, it's all of the <laughs> the inner workings of you, as it were, mm. you know, the whole thing, um, him being taken on a destination without even realizing he's going to a place where he doesn't um, um, know, mm. you know what I mean, looks up and it's like, this is not, this is not, not my house, not exactly. to be at yes, the end this of this ride, right. exactly, mm. yes, you know, and the driver just goes, yeah. doesn't say a word, just disappears and you know for all intents and purposes our, our character seems okay or at least used to this type of thing mm. it's like so what next mm. uh, you know i have a phone all right and then he hears it what does he hear we don't know mm. you know interpret that sound it. as you will but as he hears will. something yes what, in your in your mind's eye yeah what what's that thing um for me it's 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 already some kind of a sci-fi beast <laughs> <laughs> Sci-fi beast. Yes. yes. <laughs> nice. It's a thing that's not really real, mm. but is real because it exists in my mind. Okay. Yeah. All right. You know what I mean? Cool. I know. I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, yeah. I hope you you work work out your sci-fi beast. <laughs> <laughs> Me and my sci-fi I hope beast. We don't get you. As in, I don't even call him by name. He has a name. I'm just mm. calling him sci-fi beast. Okay. Cool. Disrespect. Cool. Shout out to sci-fi beast. No. 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 Don't. No. Shout out. Oh. To sci-fi oh. Beast. You don't. We, you don't talk about sci-fi beast. No. Can no. we get him on an episode? Never. Okay. <laughs> my bad. But you get to me in private whoa <laughs> whoa <laughs> alright so thanks a lot for for uh, breaking you down with me uh, breaking down episode one of uh, you and if you want to listen to you it's on the Avocado Media Zambia YouTube page you can follow Avocado Media Zambia via 
Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Avocado Media ZM. My name is Victor Mulikisa, and this has been Breaking You Down. The avocado. Where do I begin? Nature's gift to us. By design, color, and function. Very few things in the world come close. It's design. The perfect shape to carry 5 grams of protein, 6 grams of fat, 5 grams of carbohydrates, 6 grams of fiber, 316 milligrams of potassium and 56 milligrams of vitamin E. It's color. While some find green a relaxing color, others find that it gives them a feeling of excitement. This can be especially true of particularly vibrant shades of green. And finally, the taste. Some say the avocado has an earthly or grassy taste. Its overall flavor is muted and therefore not overwhelming. Overall, it has a smooth, creamy texture that makes it blend perfectly into your life. And all that was before it evolved. The Cotapella Gelato flavor is a collaboration between Gigibonda Zambia and Avocado Media to bring a blend of flavor and the richness of nutrition. Get a small cotapella at 40 kwacha and a large cotapella at 120 kwacha from all Gigibonda outlets in Lusaka, Kitwe, and Indola. All profits from Gigibonda Zambia go to the Chichatekelo Youth Project. The cotapella gelato flavor. Only the best. Only a Chichi. <laughs> Oh